The sun has been particularly powerful of late, and it will go through a fundamental and fascinating change, the reversal of its attractive field. This quirk happens for the most part at customary spans, signifying the midpoint of the sun-based cycle, and it has broad consequences for us here on Earth. Truth be informed, it's possible that rapidly the sun could represent a serious threat that could achieve total disorder and debacle for everyone on the planet. As you will track down, the sun's magnetic field is made by the advancement of electrically charged gases in its interior, a cycle known as the solar dynamo. Over the long haul, this magnetic field ends up being dynamically mind-boggling and reshaped as a result of the sun's transformation and convective developments. In the end, this process prompts a complete reversal of the magnetic extremity. The north magnetic pole transforms into the south magnetic pole and vice versa. So, could we break down the whole cycle and take a more intensive gander at the sun? The sun is made essentially out of hydrogen and helium as plasma, a condition of matter where electrons are not bound to molecules, resulting in a mix of free electrons and ions. The sun's interior is separated into several layers, with the core at the middle, enclosed by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The core is the sun's most profound region, where atomic fusion happens, changing over hydrogen into helium and delivering colossal amounts of energy. Over the core lies the radiative zone, where energy is moved outward through radiation. In this space, energy moves gradually outward as photons are over and again absorbed and re-emitted by the solar plasma. The outer layer of the sun's interior is the convective zone, where energy is moved by convection. Hot plasma rises towards the surface, cools, and then sinks down, creating convective streams. The solar dynamo process works primarily in the convective zone and the tachycline, a thin layer that lies between the radiative zone and the convective zone. The tachycline is critical because it's where the sun's differential rotation and shear flows play a crucial role in generating the magnetic field. Now, here's something intriguing that you probably will not have heard. The sun doesn't turn as a solid body. Rather, different parts of the sun rotate at different rates with the equator turning quicker than the poles, a peculiarity known as differential rotation. This differential rotation stretches and wins the magnetic field lines, increasing the magnetic field. The solar cycle is an approximately 11-year cycle during which the sun's magnetic field goes through a progression of changes, culminating in a reversal of its extremity. This cycle is driven by the solar dynamo and includes several stages. Toward the beginning of the solar cycle, the sun is in a state of solar minimum, characterized by a low number of sunspots and minimal solar activity. The magnetic field is generally straightforward and bipolar, with a distinct north and south magnetic pole. As the cycle advances, the number of sunspots increases. Sunspots are regions of intense magnetic activity and are associated with the emergence of magnetic flux from the sun's interior. These sunspots appear in pairs with opposite magnetic extremity and migrate towards the equator over time. Around the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a time of peak activity with the largest number of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. The magnetic field becomes incredibly complex and tangled due to the continuous bending and shearing by differential rotation and convection. As solar maximum wanes, the magnetic field begins to reorganize itself. The twisted and tangled magnetic field lines reconnect, and the global magnetic field slowly switches its extremity. The north magnetic pole becomes the south magnetic pole and vice versa. This cycle is facilitated by the development and restructuring of magnetic flux regions. After the extremity reversal, the sun enters a period of declining activity, returning to solar minimum. Once again, the magnetic field reorganizes, and the cycle is ready to begin anew. Presently, we're in the solar maximum phase, and the sun's magnetic field is about to flip. During this stage, we can expect to see some dramatic activity from the sun that could be as hazardous as it is intriguing. However, the sun's magnetic field reversal is not an unexpected flip, but rather a gradual process. As the solar cycle advances, the sun's magnetic field goes through a series of changes. When the magnetic field is at its most curved and tangled state, it reaches a tipping point and starts to reorganize itself, resulting in a flip. So, do we have any idea when the sun's magnetic field is going to reverse? Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity using a variety of instruments and methods, 
observatories equipped with powerful telescopes, both on Earth and in space, provide detailed images of the sun's surface and its sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory measure the sun's magnetic field and its changes over time. One key indicator of an approaching magnetic reversal is the behavior of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots appear more frequently and are more pronounced as they move towards the sun's equator, signaling that the magnetic field is becoming more unstable and is preparing to flip. While we're on the topic, let's delve a bit further into sunspots. When the sun's magnetic field lines become twisted and tangled due to differential rotation, the sun's equator rotates faster than its poles, causing the magnetic lines to stretch and twist. When these lines loop over the sun's surface, they inhibit the convective flow of hot plasma from the sun's interior, resulting in the cooler, darker patches seen in sunspot images. Sunspots are not just interesting solar features. They can sometimes produce extremely powerful solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. These phenomena release massive amounts of energy and charged particles into space. When directed towards Earth, they can disrupt satellite communications, affect power grids, and pose risks to astronauts in space. Additionally, increased solar activity can enhance auroras, but also raise radiation levels in Earth's upper atmosphere. So, while we're on the point, let's investigate the difference between solar flares and coronal mass ejections. While both are intense emissions of energy from the sun, they differ significantly. Solar flares are sudden, intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. They emit a lot of energy and light, often as X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Think of them as a flash of bright light and heat on the sun's surface like a huge explosion. Conversely, CMEs are massive eruptions of solar wind and magnetic fields from the solar corona. They can be considered giant bubbles of gas and magnetic fields expelled into space. When a coronal mass ejection occurs, it sends billions of tons of solar particles into space at very high velocities. So while solar flares and CMEs are related, they are not the same. A solar flare can happen independently, but sometimes a particularly strong solar flare can be accompanied by a CME. While a solar flare doesn't necessarily cause a CME, they can be related. In terms of danger, it depends on what we're discussing. Solar flares can disrupt radio communications, navigation signals, and pose a significant risk to astronauts in space due to the intense radiation. CMEs, however, can have a more widespread impact. They can cause geomagnetic storms that disrupt power systems, satellite operations, and those beautiful auroras. They can also increase radiation in Earth's atmosphere. While solar flares are intense and potentially harmful, CMEs tend to be more dangerous on a broader scale due to their ability to affect Earth's magnetic field and, consequently, represent a serious threat to Earth's technology and infrastructure. Another consideration is that during times of high solar activity, the amount of high radiation reaching Earth also increases. Satellites and other spacecraft are particularly vulnerable to heightened solar activity. The charged particles from the sun can damage electronic components, disrupt communication signals, and even alter satellite orbits. Aside from causing damage to technology and infrastructure, what else can happen to the planet? While the sun's magnetic field reversal doesn't directly affect Earth's atmosphere, the associated changes in solar activity can have an impact. Some studies suggest that variations in solar radiation can influence climatic conditions and weather patterns. For example, Increased solar activity can lead to a slight warming of Earth's atmosphere, which could fuel existing climate change. Could it be said that auroras are the only positive aspect we experience here on Earth? Quite possibly. One of the most remarkable effects of increased solar activity is the enhancement of these stunning lights. These natural light shows, known as the northern and southern lights, occur when charged particles from the sun interact with Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. We hear a lot about the aurora borealis, but these lights can also be seen around the South Pole. During times of high solar activity, auroras become more frequent and can be visible at lower latitudes, providing spectacular evening displays. However, apart from the beautiful auroras, there are also concerning aspects of the sun's magnetic reversal that could happen if we are not prepared. Something could occur 
leading to global turmoil. One of the main risks associated with a magnetic field reversal is the increased likelihood of geomagnetic storms. These storms happen when solar wind, laden with charged particles, interacts with Earth's magnetic field. In extreme cases, they can cause widespread blackouts and damage to infrastructure. One such event happened on the morning of September 1, 1859. Astronomer Richard Carrington was observing the sun through his telescope as he had done many times before. However, what he saw on this particular day would go down in history as the first recorded solar storm. At 11.18 a.m., Carrington noticed a brilliant flare of white light emanating from a group of sunspots. This event, now known as the Carrington event, marked the beginning of the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded. The white light Carrington saw was a massive solar flare, an intense burst of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy stored in the sun's atmosphere. This flare was so powerful that it produced a huge coronal mass ejection, CME, directly towards Earth, traveling at an astonishing speed of over 4 million miles per hour. The CME reached Earth in 17.6 hours, a remarkably short time considering the sun is 93 million miles away from us. When the CME collided with Earth's magnetosphere, it triggered a geomagnetic storm of unprecedented intensity. The impact was immediate and widespread, disrupting Earth's magnetic field and causing currents in the ground and in telegraph lines. Telegraph systems, which were the backbone of global communication at the time, experienced severe disruptions. Sparks flew from telegraph machines, operators received electric shocks, and some telegraph stations even caught fire. In some cases, the induced currents were so strong that telegraph operators could send and receive messages even after disconnecting the batteries. One of the most striking and significant outcomes of the Carrington event was the spectacular display of auroras. During the Carrington event, the auroras were so bright and widespread that they were visible far beyond the usual polar regions. People as far south as the Caribbean, Mexico, and Hawaii reported seeing the skies illuminated with vibrant colors. The auroras were so intense that they lit up the night sky to the extent that people in the northeastern U.S. could read newspapers by their light. In the Rocky Mountains, gold miners were reportedly awakened by the brilliance, confusing it with dawn and starting to prepare breakfast. People described the sky as having glowing red, green, and purple hues, moving and shimmering across the horizon. Now, imagine if a solar storm of the magnitude of the Carrington event were to hit Earth today. The consequences would be nothing short of catastrophic. The sun is going through a significant change, the reversal of its magnetic field, a process that occurs roughly every 11 years as part of the solar cycle. This event, driven by the solar dynamo, can have far-reaching implications for Earth, potentially causing disruption and disaster. The sun's magnetic field is created by the movement of electrically charged gases in its interior resulting in a complex magnetic field that eventually switches its extremity. The sun is primarily composed of hydrogen and helium plasma, with energy produced by nuclear fusion in the core. This energy is transported outward through the radiative zone and then by convection in the outer layers. The solar dynamo system, which operates in the convective zone and the tachycline, generates the sun's magnetic field. Differential rotation of the sun, where the equator rotates faster than the poles, stretches and amplifies magnetic field lines, driving the solar cycle. Currently, the sun is in the solar maximum phase, where sunspots and solar activity are at their peak, leading to potential threats such as solar flares and CMEs that can disrupt satellite communications, power grids, and pose risks to astronauts. Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity and sunspot behavior to predict the timing of magnetic field reversals. Sunspots which result from twisted magnetic lines, can produce solar flares and CMEs, both intense eruptions of energy that impact Earth in various ways. While solar flares release radiation, CMEs expel large amounts of solar particles into space. These phenomena can enhance auroras but also pose significant threats to Earth's technology and infrastructure.